So as of Unreal 5.5, uh, NDI, or Network Device Interface, uh, which is a product owned by VizRT, uh, was integrated into Unreal. Uh, now, with 5.5, it was only the output, but with 5.6, it's also input. Now, NDI is a network video, kind of like SDI. It's higher quality than RTMP streaming and that kind of stuff, but it's probably lower quality than uh, SDI. However, it's still 422 and 10-bit, um, which is much better. YouTube is 420 and 8-bit, so still higher than what you need, I would say. Uh, so there's two versions. There's normal NDI, which uses the NDI codec, and there's NDI HX, which uses either H.264 or H.265. Uh, now, the plain NDI version is the one in Unreal and it makes for some really interesting and cool workflows. I've been recommending NDI to all my streamer friends. It works great for things like VTubers uh, and just like getting multiple PC screens into say something like OBS. So I'm going to show you how to get Unreal into OBS using that as well as a fun little thing you can do with it. So. First of all, I recommend installing NDI tools. Uh, that looks like this, and it has quite a few interesting things, including a screen capture, which lets you capture your screen and send it as an NDI, uh, studio monitor, which just lets you look at all the NDI sources, test patterns, which is great for debugging NDI sources between computers, as well as remote, which is this really cool thing that lets someone else share their screen in Chrome or Edge or Brave or whatever uh, to your NDI network so you can sort of have people remote in which is really cool. So if I go to Studio Monitor which we're going to be using for the purposes of debugging uh, it looks like this so I can actually the UE150 which is the camera I'm using to record myself now uh, is NDI capable so I have it as a source here. Now if you want to use NDI in OBS uh, you need this distro AV. Uh, I'll put a link in the description but it's just on github and it's just a plugin you install in obs uh, so if i open obs it just gives me i can delete that it just basically gives me a new source type called ndi source uh, it also lets me output the where is it here we go it lets me output the program or the preview if i'm in broadcast mode to NDI as well. And I can also add on a filter to individual sources to, uh, there you go, dedicated NDI output. So I can output a OBS source to NDI as well, um, which I'm gonna cover in another video on getting NDI stuff into virtual sets, which is really cool. So on the Unreal side, you just set it up like any other media. So Originally, uh, NDI had its own plugin and you had to make a blueprint that launched it. It was very annoying, um, which is why I never really covered it. But now, NDI just comes as default, like so. I can also enable the media, IO, and framework utilities, and that lets me create a media profile. Now, what I can do is just create a new media profile. Just save it in here. I actually already created one, but I'll make another one. MP, MP NDI. So we have the option both for a source to be an NDI media source and the output to be a media output. Now NDI is kind of unique in that it, unlike say SDI, which is conformed to the SMPT, pretty sure it's a SMPT, SMPT standards uh, for resolution and frame rate and stuff like that. Uh, NDI is a little more flexible. So I need to give it a name. I'm just going to call it UE Output. UE Output. If I want it to belong to a group or not, this is useful if you have tons of NDI stuff on your network. Uh, output type. So this is the interesting thing where we can get a bit tricky with Unreal because it'll have the ability to output an alpha as well as the captured scene, but I'll leave that for a second. Desired size here, I need to specify 1920 by 1080. Uh, however, if, uh, for example, you're doing a VTuber setup or something and you want a square, you could do like 500 by 500 pixels and it works just as well. Uh, desired pixel format, so if I want to, oh, it only supports 8-bit. 
Uh, and then frame rate, I'm going to do 5994 because that's the television standard in the United States. Uh, there's some options if you want to output audio in Unreal, uh, things for synchronization and buffers, that's fine. I'm going to add a time step. I'm just going to go Genlock fix rate and I'm going to do it at 59.94 just so we don't get any screen tearing. And just like that, I can then go ahead and add, you know, my output to my media capture and just hit capture. And just like that. So if I go to, for example, here, there's my laptop and there's the UE output. And so you can see I'm getting that the output. So this will work not only on the local machine, but any machine connected to my PC on the network. Now, if you are gonna do it across the network, I definitely recommend using ethernet. Um, don't try and do it over Wi-Fi. However, now that I have it here, it also means that I can go into OBS and I can add an NDI source and it will also show up here, UE output. And so now I have Unreal directly in OBS. And so that's, you could do something like a VTuber setup or if you have a cool scene you wanna show off in on, uh, OBS or if you wanted to use this as a background for your, you know, if you have a green screen setup or something like that, use OBS to key it out. Pipe Unreal in, Unreal could run on a completely separate machine so you don't have to worry about performance. Really handy. Now the more interesting thing. Ah, you see, so this has gone uh, green because it's in preview and red because it's uh, in program, that's okay. So the more interesting thing we can do is alpha. So to do that, I do need to change a project setting. And it's just the, it used to be called, uh, allow alpha through tone mapper. I think it's just called alpha now. Alpha output, that needs to be turned on for this to work. And then if you saw my tutorial about uh, Unreal AR, very, very similar process. We just need a level that is empty basically. So if I go into my cinema camera here, um, I can just go into game view and then capture. If I go back to OBS, nothing. Let us switch on fill and key. Now, much like when you use fill and key on Blackmagic devices, you do need to invert it. Uh, if Unreal has it flipped for some reason. But if I capture and go back to OBS, you can now see my cube is directly composited over the top. And I can you know, use some of OBS's blending modes if I wanted to, just to make it uh, different effects. Now, the one gripe I have with this setup is uh, if I go into my post process volume post process volume here and just ramp my bloom up to something stupid and then look back at OBS and you know I'll even stop and start capture just to make it but if I look back at OBS I don't have bloom so the uh, the ultimates call it realistic compositing mode um, obviously when we do it in the material in a post-process material, we call it over. Um, you know, it's that setup where you sort of multiply the images or add the images together and then multiply it by the uh, alpha. OBS doesn't have that built in and I couldn't find a workaround either. So not ideal, um, but bloom effects like that or any screen-based effects won't work. Uh, if you fake bloom, by you know, using a PNG texture on like a plane and just positioning it, that will work fine because that's a thing that's physically in the Unreal world. But Bloom doesn't exist in the world per se. Uh, now, one not great way to get around this, if you really wanted to, is if I switch it back to fill and hit capture. Uh, we obviously getting it now. And then if I switch the blending mode in OBS to add, then I do technically get it, assuming the background is always black and my object isn't dark. As Soon as I throw an object in there that is dark, um, then it will start to get keyed out as well. So not ideal, but a technical workaround. Now, you know, then when we look at things like the motion design tools and all that kind of stuff that Unreal's introducing, you can see, you know, you can really start to make some really cool uh, graphics, whether it's a lower third or a ticker or like a scoreboard or something in Unreal that gets animated and you can put it, pipe it straight into OBS using NDI. So it's really, really cool. And now I've got a couple of other 
um, tutorials and stuff coming up that is going to use this workflow. And so that's why I wanted to make this rather simple tutorial just as a base, uh, base, I guess, to build upon. So I hope that was informative or interesting or anything of the likes. Um, yeah, if I drop this back to say a reasonable value, like one or five, yeah, so you can see where, why that effect falls apart quickly. Um, anyway, I hope you found this uh, somewhat useful, um, and I will see you in the next one.